Hello, and welcome to the third week of IFPDA Print Month. I'm David Tunick, president of the IFPDA. And once again, let me express our deep gratitude to the Metropolitan Museum of Art for this collaboration. We had the Metropolitan Director, Max Holine, on one of these Print Month presentations about 10 days ago, and his excitement for and knowledge of prints came through loud and clear. It's great when that passion exists at the top. We also owe great thanks to the Mets print department head, Nadine Ornstein. Special appreciation and credit to Met curator, Jennifer Farrell for organizing this symposium. It is in three parts on successive Mondays and is devoted to the extraordinary Grosvenor School of Modern Art and Artists. Today is part two and is devoted to the Swiss-born artists, Will Schutte. I'm gonna throw a lot of dates and numbers at you in the next uh, 30, 60 seconds, so be prepared. It was 1985 when the Metropolitan Museum acquired and was gifted its first linoleum cuts, three of them by Will Schutte. 20 years later in 2005, the New York collectors Leslie and Joanna Garfield gifted the museum another linoleum cut by Judy, who had died only one year before in 2004. Then in 2019, in what is recognized as a game changer in our field, the Met, via purchase and gift, acquired 700 works from the Garfield collection, which included more than 100 prints and related drawings by Judy. That on block acquisition of 700 items is what inspired the exhibition we all look forward to that opens at the Met on November 1st, entitled Modern Times British Prints 1913 1939. It is curated by the estimable Jennifer Farrell and accompanied by a 200 page book. You will hear, hear shortly from Jennifer whose title is Curator of Modern and Contemporary Prints and Illustrated Books at the Met. The book and the exhibition, we can be sure, will be informative, groundbreaking, and dazzling. As to Jennifer, she has an extensive resume of degrees, achievements, and exhibitions. She's been associated with and lectured at museums, including the Met, of course, but also Smith, Yale, UVA, the Whitney, the Morgan, and the Museum of Modern Art in New York. A word about logistics. If you have any questions, drag your cursor over the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen, type the question in, and we'll see how many we can get to before this ends. With close to 200 people with us today, we will perforce be limited. And now it is a pleasure to turn this over to Jennifer Farrell, who will be introducing our guest speaker today. Marcel Eust, the foremost authority of our time on Will Trudy. Jennifer, your screen. Thank you, David, for the warm introduction and also the hospitality of IFPDA for um, allowing us to have this fascinating symposium that is really wonderful as we're able to cross over uh, into other continents and bring in fantastic scholars. So today's talk, which really should be groundbreaking, is by Marcel Eust who, as David mentioned, is an independent scholar with a background that includes work in film, as well as numerous publications and exhibitions on art, architecture, and design, with a focus on the interwar and post-war periods in Europe. In 2017, Marcel curated the project on Swiss traditional costumes in art and applied art ranging from the 1780s to the contemporary period that was held at the Kunstmuseum Solothurn in 2017. Recently, he has worked with the curator, Alexandra Barkal of the Grafis Schemlung ETH Zurich, an institution with one of the largest and most prestigious collections of prints and drawings in Switzerland on an upcoming exhibition and related publication dedicated to the Swiss artist, Lil Schutte the subject of Marcel's talk today. Um, it is not an understatement to say that this exhibition and publication will be groundbreaking. Uh, Shudi is probably the artist in the core group of the Grosvenor School about whom the least is known. So this will really add greatly to the literature 
and our knowledge of this important yet underrecognized artist. Um, in addition to some of her best known works in the period in which she was affiliated with the aforementioned Grosvenor School artist, the exhibition, Lil Shooty, The Excitement of Modern Linocut, 1930 to 1950, which runs from December 1st, 2021 to March, 2022, will include several pieces by Shooty that have not been exhibited before, as well as very important source material and work such as her illustrations for children's books and oil paintings, many of which are less familiar. Thus, the exhibition and the book, which I've had the great pleasure to preview, it provides critical background and insight into this very important artist. For the catalog, Marcel has written incredibly perceptive and important essays on Shudi's poster designs and her interest in posters as a medium entitled Detour into Advertising. And on her other work for the Swiss Women's Auxiliary Service, FHD, We at the FHD. Um, much of which hopefully he will discuss in the talk about Shudi's work, We're in the Army Now, which should be absolutely incredible. With this, I invite you to enjoy what should be a fascinating and important talk that will expand our knowledge of this very critical artist. Thank you. Marcel? Thank you. <laughs> Jennifer, thank you a lot for this introduction. And um, we're proud that we can open a month later than when your show is uh, starting with our single show um, of uh, Lil Judy, the first time in a big Swiss city in Zurich. So what we see here is that one of the very rare photographs, Lil Judy hated to be photographed, but she photographed a lot. So I guess this is a shot that was taken by her sister, Adri. And um, that's why I wanna tell a little bit more about the family um, because it was a sort of a menage, not a trois, but at, got to, um, at four. Um, she lived together with her mother her sister, the boyfriend, and later on husband of her sister, and the kids of her sister. That was the package. They also traveled a lot together and uh, discovered all kinds of places in, in Europe together. And even when she started um, her, um, her uh, education at the Grosvenor School of Art, they went there, three of them, there's a picture in our book at uh, Cliffs of Dover, mother, sister, and Lil. So she was born in 1911 in Schwanden in Switzerland. And it's in the canton of Glarus. A canton is like a state, a sort of a region. It's just in scale much smaller than the states are in, in, in America because our country is rather a small place. So basically it's a valley that sort of uh, splits um, halfway in, in two valleys, but it doesn't go really anywhere. Um, uh, one, one road goes over a pass road that is closed in winter time um, to another canton, but other than that, it's a cul de sac. So it's rural and at the same time in this valley was a big um, industrial tradition um, for um, printing fabric. So it was also weaving fabric and all kinds of things till this all died and went to the um, Far East. But um, she was also from one of the industrial families. The Judys were in different sections. Her father was um, producing guns and, and bullets, and, but he, he is not important in the life because he died when Lil was seven. So important is the mother and her sister, 
which was also experimenting in the arts a little bit. She was uh, doing uh, ceramics and painting the ceramics and so on. And uh, was uh, always with Lil um, in, in, on, on the road um, and exploring and, and um, traveling together. And the mother was into heraldic um, um, uh, work and uh, Lil sometimes worked together with her mother. Um, she, she did coat of arms of all the different branches of the Judy families and things like that, or, or the coat of arms of the villages. And sometimes Lil produced after the designs of the mother, um, lino cuts of it. And um, we, we will show some of that stuff also in, in, in the exhibition. But for the people who don't know Lil Judy very well, um, I'm gonna show first some of the iconic pictures she did in the 30s after um, she went to the Grosvenor School in London. And she had their private tutoring uh, by Claude Flight. Her teacher was, she was in touch with him all the way till he died. So that was actually the only real connection with another artist that sort of never died. And other than that, we don't know like who she knew at the time when she was in London. There's not much uh, written um, uh, uh, information. And um, that's, uh, that's why we also don't see um, a lot of photographs and a lot of other materials. It's very scarcely um, uh, 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 and very hard to find. But this um, double picture, I sort of like flipped over and um, the left, one is how is the right one in terms of uh, her hair going down. So the left picture. Now, when we read here, military subjects in Lil Judy, Judy's lino cuts, um, that's in Switzerland, a very special thing uh, um, because there was no tradition um, of uh, reporting uh, mi military stuff because we didn't have First World War. We didn't have Second World War, really. And, um, well, we were um, just surrounded, but it never, they, they, no attacks happened. And <clears throat> so we, we're gonna go through, through this and, and I show you what, what um, uh, yeah, what, what came out of all, all, all of that stuff. Um, now we go to the first um, a picture and you see underground, 1930. So it was done, um, I don't know in what month um, uh, it was done, but it's while she was at uh, Grosvenor School um, in London, um, she did this probably, it was one of the early ones. Um, and it's very a dynamic uh, picture um, with the two sort of circles, the line that uh, of the tunnel and and the vault of the tunnel and 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 the different colors um, gives a certain uh, uh, dynamic to it. Even though there's no train um, in the picture, you just see the tracks. And um, as the curve um, is pretty tight, we um, remember when we are in London, we always hear, mind the gap. And that's why you, you, you need it, because when the train is in the station, there's something sliding out, so you can step to the platform. And there's a, always <clears throat> a little gap. So you see here advertising and lettering and that kind of stuff she was always interested um so you can read here waterloo station and you can read way out um and you know that you're in london and not in america because it doesn't say exit and it's um a, a wonderful um 
three colored um, uh, uh, piece. And don't forget, she was 18 when she did this. So we go to the next one. So as underground shows the world of big city life, that was one topic that um, uh, she sort of discovered while in London. And one other topic is work. So um, fixing the wires is one of those and all her work pictures are basically with men at work. You hardly see there is like two, two pieces. One um, shows uh, life class um, at, uh, at the academy in France and the other one um, shows seven nudes um, that, that are sort of relaxing before they have to go in the different classes so they can um, uh, draw um, from, from the nude figure. Um, this piece is one of the uh, famous ones. It's in all the big collections, even the Museum of Modern Art. They only have one, but that's the one they have. And it's, of course, nothing new in 1932, um, because this kind of telephone thing, which was the revolution, like we had the digital revolution at the end of the 20th century, um, this was going on, but it still shows that was, um, especially in the countryside, that was still uh, in operation and, and lots of people still had no phones. And so this is, was very an important thing um, at the time. So we go to the next one, which is, um, a big part of her work is sports. So here you see summer sports, Tour de Suisse is like the Tour de France, a yearly biking um, event. And it's a wonderful piece um, with this um, totally drunk um, road going up and down and, and, and the graphic design of, of the walls and, and, and the meadows in between. And, it has an incredible dynamic. This is one of the very iconic um, uh, pieces of, of, of her work. We go to the next one. So big city life, sports, and now another topic. Um, well, it might have, it might happen in, 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 in like that in, in the big city too, but it's entertaining. Is, is the name of the game here. She did lots of uh, concerts and, and musicians and circus um, uh, people uh, and, and so on. And um, also um, quite nice pictures a little later, 1936, um, there was Rumba one, Rumba two. So it comes, sometimes she added um, the same for the same uh, kind of vision she had uh, at different um, stages. And this is um, my favorite ones from this kind of um, uh, little sort of trios or quartets and, and so on. So we go to the next one. Now you say, okay, sports again. But um, of course, in, in the mountains of Switzerland, winter sport is actually more important than uh, summer sports. Uh, she did lots of skiing stuff, but I show this because this is a drama, right? It's, this, is, this goes in the direction of, of um, the fights. It's a fight between um, the white trousers and the black trousers, and it's a very condensed um, uh, um, a, a picture. You don't see the puck, but um, they're fighting for it. And if you look at ice hockey games today, they're even they all have helmets on. It's actually a dangerous uh, fight they they do. And I love how she 
does the skating marks around like sort of like a bird's nest holding together all those those crazy guys that um, want to get to the pub. Now we go to the next one and it shows dramatically also a fight. It's also called fight between lobster and an octopus. This is not a little Judy thing. This is Norbertine Breslin Roth. So who is Norbertine Breslin Roth? Um, she was an artist from um, Graz, uh, which is um, in Austria. And she did basically animal lionel cuts. And on a trip to Belgium and Holland, um, she went to the Antwerp Zoo, where there was a show with animal pieces. We don't know if it was a single show of Norbertine Breslin Roth or, or assembled. But she saw Norbert, she discovered there Norbertine Breslin Roth. And this was sort of like the, the jumping point for her to find out Lino Cut, what, how do we get there? How do we, um, can I handle that? I, I want to do that. She was impressed. She um, bought um, uh, a, a a piece there and also her sister bought a piece but we don't know um, which ones and they didn't show up in the estate so we don't really know more about that we just know that this was an important thing and this is all before of course that she goes to the Grosvenor school it's um, the piece is from 24 I think um, uh, let me see. Um, uh, yeah. Um, and and um, and the Antwerp Zoo, by the way, I have I have to add something. They they always had artists in residence, and Rembrandt Bugatti basically lived there for a while and did all those marvelous um, uh, sculpture of uh, uh, different animals. And um, that's why that show was, was there at the zoo. So what does she do? She goes home and we go to the next picture and we see on the left side, her first lino cut she ever did before she had any instructions on how to do it. So this is sort of like fall 29 um uh i would say and uh here we are already in the military department if you want um it shows louis and napoleon we have no idea which louis she meant god doors or whatever but when we look at that um she did that with any kind of instrument she had to sort of um, you know, scratch um, uh, the linoleum plate. Um, pretty, pretty amazing, actually. If you look those lines on the bottom, I mean, quite, you know, and also the, the whole um, uh, cloud situation, I find um, quite interesting and the contrast and with the, uh, in the background with a little part of uh, a city and, uh, I find it very attractive for um, a, a first piece she um, showed. It's too bad that we can't find it. Um, this is just, I photographed it out of a book. Uh, nobody knows where it is. Um, we don't know, it's not in her log book where she has all the prints sort of um, with titles and, 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 and how many prints she did and where they went. So this is not part of that uh, logbook series. So it's um, before, and there is a second one that we found with, um, I, I don't show it though, um, with a, a fountain in a courtyard of a monastery uh, near Florence. So that we found now in the, in the estate, I haven't seen it before ever. 
On the right side, this is the husband of Adrian called Adri, her sister, Robert Mutter in a, a Swiss uniform, a military uniform, a portrait. She, did, she didn't do too many portraits as close as this. And um, you have to know in, in, in Switzerland, everybody, um, they draft everybody and then they, you know, select who can join or not. And, and uh, you do 17, uh, month, uh, 17 weeks um, of basic in, introduction into the uh, military um, service and then you go every year till you're about uh, 38 or something uh, for three um, weeks to shape up again, which is not um, a very rare thing. Uh, I never um, had to go, so luck lucky I was. Um, we, we go to the next um, two pieces. So when you see um, the, on the right side, Lil Judy's sword drill, um, which is actually a quite amazing um, piece. Um, and it's 1930, so it's an early one. So it's between um, uh, some of her iconic ones and very known. Uh, once and then comes in between a military subject. And that's um, uh, kind of surprising. But she loved them. Um, actually, I think it's great, you know, with the white, the red, the green, the shadows, um, and this lineup into, you know, you can picture it all the way uh, even further than that. And it's quite, it's quite amazing. And the instruction guy on the right, um, he should be um, uh, happy about it because they perfectly set up the, here. On the other side, 36 years, I just found that um, uh, at some point, and I, I found it funny, Felix Valotton, a very um, important Swiss, um, uh, artist did about 36 years before another lineup and and also an instructor he's not so happy with those dopey looking lineup to his left but even in the background you see some they're trying to walk cord in coordination and so on so it's all this kind of um a, a drilling work um and I, I, I find it interesting that um, this this kind of um, if you know this kind of um, uh, view of two pieces that go in the same direction. And um, I'm sure she knew uh, this piece of Valotin is very very known in Switzerland. So we go to the next ones. Now. Also pretty early um, on, the, on the right side are the Spahis. I don't know where the name comes from, but it was the Algerian uh, unit of the French army. So um, why she picked that theme up, um, I have not the slightest idea, but obviously she was fascinated by uniforms, by by with those hats and the boots and everything. And on the left side, you see a photograph she uh, did in, in Paris um, as um, a unit of French soldiers walk by. And um, as you see, the rifles are not in perfect coordination, <laughs> but all have the right foot ahead. So they have some coordination. Um, uh, so we go to the next two ones. And this is sort of the end of the 30s here on the left side. And it shows like she goes more and more uh, into 
um, the world where she lives, um, we, we're talking about um, Schwanden and the surroundings and this battle of 1388 is uh, happened in a village close by um, called Nafels. And um, it was a battle <clears throat> against, the, uh, against the Habsburgians. And they showed up with 6,000 soldiers. And in the valley, there were only 600. So they used a trick um, that was not only here, um, sort of um, set in motion, but many times in Switzerland, you go up in the mountains and you roll rocks down there. So you smash, they go into the horses and they create a, a frenzy and then everybody goes crazy. And then you run down and attack. So this is what, um, what, what's going on here. So that the small rocks they, they do here is nothing. They, they really roll big, big rocks down. But it's great like how, you know, when you study and you jump into the picture, you see, ah, oh, there's a horse here and there's a horse there. And you see all kinds of uh, helmets and, and, and the Glarus flag is in there too and, uh, and so on. Um, but it's still not actually, it's, it's, it was probably quite a mess and a pretty bloody thing. But when you look at it, it's kind of uh, nice graphic design <laughs> to sort of see it. So on, on, on the right, um, another um, history thing from the surroundings of her home village. Um, it's not um, uh, Napoleon we see here, it's a Napoleonic hat. It's Thomas Legler, who was with a unit from Glarus and other places from Switzerland on the road with uh, Napoleon to Russia. And um, as you know, that was, um, that was, too heavy uh, a goal he set there and he had to turn around. And Mr. Legler's job was um, taking care, pushing back the Russians around the Beresina River you see here on, on the right. Um, so, so the main troops of Napoleon were able to go to the other side and, and, and the retreat sort of like was not, um, was held back by Legler and his troop. And he went back then to Glarus and, and um, not very, very many um, people or soldiers um, survived that thing. So it was, yeah, it was a tough, tough, uh, um, a, a tough experience. This is already, she did that already in the war years. But now we're going and we go to the next ones into the Second World War years where Lil Judy served in the women's auxiliary service of the Swiss army. And on, on the left, you see a book from 1940 and um, they're, they're swearing and you see a draft for a poster or an ad. I don't know what it's actually for. We couldn't figure that out, but it was for some printing thing. Um, and the Women's Auxiliary Service is in German Frauenhilfsdienst and FHD is the abbreviation um, uh, for this unit and SC F um, uh, is the French um, uh, 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 abbreviation. So what do we see here and why do they swear? Um, so you see on the right one, um, this draft from Lil Judy, um, on the left, uh, a lady and she stands for uh, the service at hospitals. Um, 
uh, and 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 th that sort of an operation they did with uh, during the wartime with the Red Cross. In the middle, you see a lady in a local costume, and she stands for um, work work on the farm because the men were all at the border. Um, and uh, on the right, there is um, uh, a, a lady in the uh, uniform of the FHD. And they're swearing. So this goes all back to our founding myth of the first three cantons. They met on a, a meadow um, in, 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 in Switzerland called Rütli. And they were swearing to an oath that they will help each other and they will not uh, let any intruders coming into their um, in their uh, region. So this this is all sort of like um, sort of like reenacting. Um, uh, our founding myth of um, Switzerland. And it was in those days three uh, cantons. So we have three different ladies here standing in front of that Swiss cross on a mountain. And um, we are looking that nobody disturbs us. Um, so we go to the um, next ones. So, um, Lil Trudy was, by the way, um, president of the Glarus unit of the FHD. And um, she was involved in drafting and organizing all kinds of uh, things. And while I was searching um, for, for pictures around this um, ladies military service that had before 1940 when it was created uh, by um, uh, General Guizon um, uh, sort of signed the paper that now women could uh, come in and help uh, behind, the, behind the, the lines or the, the border um, to support in any way they can. And they um, started a competition. Uh, Lil was probably not in there, we don't know. There were 24 entries and it was a competition for a propaganda stamp. It was won by Anna-Marie von Mott. Um, you see that on the right side. She is um, an interesting artist. Um, I, I, well, you can't tell from this piece, but I call her the Frida Kahlo of Switzerland. And on, on the left side, you have um, a draft from Honey Bai, um, uh, and it shows like, uh, so the women do women, jobs for women do, you know, cooking, serving. They also were drivers. Um, in the army and they served with the pigeon unit to disperse um, uh, information. And um, the men were at the border as you see here in this uh, silhouette of, of a, a soldier. So this is sort of like the flair uh, around it. And it had no tradition before, not like, like for example, in England where, um, Ladies were already in the First World War, a part of uh, army units. And uh, that's why you have in, in the Imperial War Museum uh, all kinds of art you can find uh, with um, war and military and, and so on subjects. Um, and and uh, this, this actually didn't happen. And when you look through their paper, they had their own paper, the FHD Bulletin, it was a monthly, and almost on every cover was a little Judy um, a picture. So she did quite a bit of those um, uh, 
FHD uh, subjects, which we will see right on the next two ones. So this is um, the first one she did in 1940, and it's for a few years, the last one um, uh, in, in color. And it shows um, as they also, um, for poor people, they make meals and they, they see that uh, you have to imagine when all the men are at the border and, and people have to, you know, milk the cows or, or work in the factory. Um, there was, um, and raise kids and so on. So they were helping um, also in, in this kind of um, a case, um, they were feeding um, uh, poor people and so on. So the next one is just um, a similar one, but just uh, um, the FHD themselves at the table during um, lunchtime. Um, I, I like it in, it in in the in this sort of like raw style of 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 uh, and symmetric kind of thing, and what she does uh, many times uh, in 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 different um, uh, of different line of cuts is you see a lot of people from the back. Uh, that, that's one thing she does quite quite often. Um, I, I love the texture of this, um, uh, and, and then outside is like just white, but on the left you see too, you know, the, the mountain is always somewhere in Switzerland. Um, we go to the next two. So here um, on the left you see um, a star coming down and it's called um, it says in the text, mein Heimatland, mein Vaterland. So these are very patriotic um, pieces um, that sort of like show how unified they, they are and, and in spirit and together to fight um, uh, for their um, fatherland. And on the right side, um, they're both from 1941. This is now on the Rütli, where this oath, the, the swearing on the oath was happening. And you see the, um, from the back, the FHD, they just um, finished their introduction uh, weeks uh, in the service and in the middle you have the Swiss flag and officers saluting and on the other side they, you have onlookers, I don't know, farmers or whoever was was around. The next two ones. So these two um, pieces show what they sort of had to practice when, when you joined. On, on the left one, it's like uh, finding people who uh, were uh, under avalanches with those long sticks. You go very slowly and see um, what stops you with, uh, and so on. And then sometimes you dig there and find somebody. And on the right one, it's called uh, orienteering. It's like how to find your path in the mountains when it's bad weather and reading maps, uh, compass and all that kind of uh, business was in the learning process. So we're going now in 43, um, uh, 44. Um, nobody knows that it's soon going to come to an end. And um, we have to, of course, understand the whole situation, I forgot to say that, um, Hitler was in the north and already in 1939, he jumped into Poland. Uh, in 38, already he took over Austria to the east um, uh, of Switzerland. In the south was Mussolini and in the west, uh, already in 1940, it, he started with, uh, the big um, uh, taking over of uh, France going towards Paris. That was already in 1940. 
uh, happening. So we go to the next one. And when you're encircled like that, it's sort of, um, well, um, it's, it's coming to all this patriotism and, and, and things like that. So here we see something that um, nobody believed because uh, they were not supposed to carry weapons. But there's two pieces she did uh, with the instructor you see from the back, how to put the rifle together and all this kind of practicing um, uh, work at the rifles. Um, so this was sort of like uh, on the cover. Um, nobody talked about it, but um, as you can see, um, uh, she did some of those um, uh, themes here, motives. Next one. And this is a very rare one. She only did two prints of this. Um, uh, you don't know, um, we don't know we, if they're ladies because the helmets were the same as the men. The men had the same helmet. Um, at the border with prisoners, um, I doubt it, but it's, it, it might be inspired by a photograph in a magazine or something. Um, I, I put it in because um, it happened in between those FHD uh, prints and it's uh, quite amazing because it's a night thing. And I, I kind of like the, um, the, the drama you can see here. We go to the next ones. Oh, this was this was in 44. The Swiss government has said we need more ladies in the FHD because each of those ladies makes um, you know makes the possibility of another man, another soldier at the border. Um, uh, 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 you know, so 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 it frees the the the, the, the place. Um, so next, please. So another thing, another topic she um, she did was um, uh, refugees came in, and um, here you see a arrival of um, refugees in Switzerland. It's you know sad faces and. Um, uh, it's a big drama to um, leave a country because you run away and, and you can't bear it anymore. And then we go straight to the next one. And you are surprised that once they're in the refugee camp, they start singing already and having a good time. And they all have um, wonderful clothes on. So this is like a a, a big surprise um, on, and change of um, uh, of of, of um, style. Um, um, I, I was I was very amazed about that, but obviously um, um, they recovered from their trips um, very fast. So we're going to the next one. So um, in the camps, they had um, uh, the, the color comes back, as you can see, only one here. And, uh, and this, this is the nursery of the camp with all these babies in wicker baskets. It's kind of uh, funny. And you see that it turns a bit like into children's illustration. And when we see the last one of this series, already done in November 1945. Um, more colors here. And the FHD uh, gives milk to the uh, kids. And um, there is hope in the air that war is over. The war stopped in spring uh, 1945. And here we are very much in the in children's illustration thing which she also did, but almost nothing was published. She did books for the children of her sister, and um, they're quite amazing. And there's um, lino, cuts in, lino cuts in there, in those books, and, and, and wonderful, wonderful text and, you know, great stuff. 
but it never came. She only did a little um, a story that she illustrated, um, but all the other stuff was like for private use. So that was it. Thank you. So let's see if we have, I didn't see any questions. Um, let's open um, the round. We have seven minutes <laughs> or more. Jennifer, do you mind if I uh, ask a question? Go ahead, David. Okay. I um, wanted to ask you, uh, Marcel, it's clear that she was a loyal um, and enthusiastic, proud Swiss citizen. What else do you know, and maybe you did touch on this, um, what else do you know about her, her politics? Well, we don't know much um, about that, but she was um, in a way um, um, more or less um, very liberal um, um, and, and, um, and open uh, for, for a, a lot of things. Um, you know, that's why she traveled. But in the end, she was a country pumpkin, you know? Um, she was six months at the Grosvenor School at 18 from, from December till May. And then she was in 31, 32, 33. She was in each year for two months only in Paris with André Lot, with um, Severini, the futurist, and with Fernand Léger, where she studied, as she says, um, uh, uh, publicité, which is basically advertising, and that's why she started them um, poster designs. Of course, she didn't sell anything, nothing was used, because there's almost no ladies in, in the poster graphic design um, in the 30s. Um, it's all dominated by, by men. But she was open and started all kinds of things, and um, yeah, um, I, I think she was an open-minded um, lady, but since we don't have a lot of information and she had no sort of like exchange with other artists, she lived in this bubble of the family all the way, even during the time when the sister was in Zurich, living in Zurich, she went back and forth and she lived a little bit in Zurich and you know, it's it's hard to say, but it's nothing. We don't have anything written. We have one little interview she did uh, at an old age. Um, she was, I think, eighty three or something, um, where she talks a little bit um, about uh, um, leger and 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 how it was in school and what. Um, but it's very, you know, um, very hard to sort of like find out what, what how she was. We know she had never, um, um, she was, some people say she was in love with her teacher, Claude Flight, but Claude Flight uh, visited her with his girlfriend in Switzerland. So there was nothing happening and um, she has no kids. That's why she was perfect for the, FHD um, to serve in the army. She was not. She she was not connected, only with her uh, family. Uh, Marcel, um, we've gotten a lot of questions about the market for Shudi, both her general um, interest in it from collectors and institutions, um, as well as the work she made during um, her period in the army or in the um, FHD of uh, about what the edition size would be and if anyone collected those works or, um, you know, if they were distributed in any other way. Well, the, all, all the, the Swiss um, uh, rural uh, stuff and the Swiss um, uh, military subjects, they were not printed. Sometimes it says 50, but I go to the logbooks and I see, uh-huh, um, there were only uh, um, uh, uh, 23 actually printed. And sometimes I can even read, you know, the last one went to Mary Ryan in 1990 six or something so she writes in where they spread 
but um, a lot of the, a lot of the, you know, the, 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 the Swiss part uh, didn't interest anybody. So the iconic thing that was sold and she, her fame comes through Claude Flight shows at the Redfern Gallery and the Ward Gallery during the 30s. That's when the, the V&A bought their stuff and the British Museum started to buy certain things. And that sort of picked up in, 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 in after, after the Second World War in, I don't know, in the 80s. And with the work catalog by Stephen Copel, it started really going, you know, people knew what she did a little bit. Not everything was in there because he didn't know all, all the pieces, but we found a lot of stuff that is not in there. But basically the market was very small. But the runners, for example, the one thing I showed um, uh, fixing the wires with pe people at the telephone pole, that was from the, she did a USA edition of that because everybody wanted the same stuff. So it, she did a new edition and, and that was then um, sold uh, to America, to England. And the family, um, uh, not the, the, the ladies that are running the estate now, but the men before their fathers, they sold everything to England and America. That's why we don't have anything. There's not one museum has a little Judy. Only the, the ETH collection, the, the Zurich collection has like, the town of Zurich has like six pieces. The Canton has, of Zurich has another seven or something. And the only museum is the Glarus Museum um, who has like, I don't know, um, 15 or something like that. And the rest is in your house. You know? <laughs> well, you'll, so. have to come, you'll have to come visit. Uh, we, I had another question too, it was, uh, your, how you might view some of the work she made uh, during the war in addition to the pieces that you showed. For example, Furniture Removing 2, which is 41, which relates to Furniture Removing 1, which was almost a decade or five years earlier. Do you see any connection at all with some of those works and uh, leading up with, with the political situation that you're discussing, um, that you discussed so beautifully and also her involvement? Um, because she would have been several months or a year into her service at the time she made that piece. Well, she, 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 she was five years in, in right. Years. I don't know how uh, in, in terms of hours or every day or how did this happen? I have no idea. But um, uh, it's, it's, it's like she, she goes in another direction, you mm. know? And she, actually she said in this one interview that there is uh, on film um, that she left. They asked her, do you want to keep going at the FHD after the war was over? And she said, no, because mm -hmm. um, it hurt my sort of program. I, I didn't develop in the right direction because I had to make them so it's understandable for the Swiss local people what's happening mm. what she's talking about and the other stuff um, uh, was too too far out or too too what we call the iconic pieces um, they were not um, in her surrounding in that valley. They were, you know, there were very few people who jumped on them. Um, um, so, so it's she, she she sort of blocked herself during that time, mm -hmm. and she tries afterwards um, um, and goes still about 1949, um, uh, where it ends with the homage at the two big cities, Paris and London buses for, for London. Um, and that's sort of like, that works again. That was a, a seller again, because she picks up the former um, uh, kind of uh, taste of, of producing things, you know? But then it sort of goes downhill also with, um, uh, let's say uh, with vacation um, um, 
pieces, you know, more Cote or Venice, and they're just sort of like postcards. Mm. Before, when she did vacation pay, uh, we have cleaning, uh, cleaning a sail, um, um, the sailors cleaning a sail, or the, uh, the boccia players, she she goes not on 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 a postcard image. She goes right into the working class people and puts something that she saw there. Mm-hmm. And so you see, it's 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 uh, her best stuff is in the thirties. That's it, you know. And then she sort of like has some glimpses in um, after the World War. Hmm. And in 55, she goes into uh, abstraction and that didn't leave a mark in any kind of direction. Do you think that her studies with Leger influenced the work that she made during the war? Or, and do you know of any links at all between her and him aside from the attending his courses? No, I, well, th- she doesn't say that much um, in that interview, but what, what, it, what, what we saw is that she started doing all kinds of creating posters. And, and she says that she tried to sort of go in, into that trade to make money, you know, or additional money, but it's, it didn't work. She didn't sell it, you know, mm. it's, it, nobody wants it. And, and if you, I think one thing you have is, um, uh, Winterland in 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 Glarus, you know, which is a wonderful piece, you know. It's not to be found in Switzerland in any public. Uh, it, it was too avant-garde for those guys. So it's they all went to the Anglo-Saxon world. And the other day, no, it's amazing. The other day I was um, uh, on on online uh, looking what is in Australia and in Canberra, the National Gallery has 25 pieces. Mm-hmm. There's no Swiss in- institution has 25 pieces. Yeah. yeah. Well, so we, we, we have a question also from one of the attendees. Um, if you could speak, do you think the, do you think her father's involvement with munitions was the reason she was interested in the military or was it the circumstances of being surrounded by Hitler's army during World War II? Well, I, I, I think this this patriotic uh, patriotic um, uh, thing uh, happened throughout uh, the Swiss society because you have to imagine he go he jumps into every country around us, and we are this small thing. And so, what's happening? When is he coming? Um, so you create like a frenzy, or I don't know how. It's, mm-hmm. um, but I don't think I don't think she was seven when when her father died. Uh, I don't think that had to do anything with it. The fascination of 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 the military subjects have to do with with. Um, I, I mean, I, I saw many other photographs. They were not so good as the the French one because it's in Paris and it's almost empty and there is a unit coming. But she did Swiss um, uh, army uh, walking by and all kinds of photographs like that. But she was fascinated by by um, it, even even in 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 other pieces where they just off. You know, it's always like bet- competition between people. But on the other side, with the army stuff, it had to be um, coordinated. You know, she was fascinated. They all come in the same rhythm, uh, and 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 the sequences, and um, it's it sort of like uh, were interesting to her. I think there is also one piece called where you see three guys on handstand. Um, you know Gymnast. that one. Yeah, so, uh, the the gymnastics. Um, so that kind of thing she liked. Mm. You know series yeah. or 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 um, yeah i don't know i don't i don't think i don't think the father was sort of like away very fast 
What, what's, what's amazing is just um, uh, the, the entire growing up, normal schools, um, uh, then the, the, the usual um, year in the uh, French part of Switzerland, and then through one piece by Norbertine Breslin Roth, she goes, she decides to go into art. That's quite amazing. Before she would only had little drawing class with Madame Bouillamont. We don't know anything about her in Lausanne. That's it. So one piece sets the tone and, and, and she saw an ad in, in Studio Magazine and here we go to London. It's, a, it's, a, it's quite amazing and it worked only because Claude Flight was kind of connected with her all the way through his life. If that wouldn't have happened, nobody would know Le Judy, I think. The first print she ever did or the second went straight to Claude Flight, you know, and then he, he, he wrote down great, beautiful, uh, whatever. Um, uh, and then he showed, he showed her in, in England and that sort of, yeah. I mean, in France, she was over three years in France. Nobody knows her in France. She's in no collection in France. So that, because there she didn't have anybody who pick, picked up on it. May I say one thing, please? I know that we're over our time, but most of our attendees are still on. I can see the numbers. And we're lucky enough to have Gordon Samuel and Mary Ryan uh, on screen, or they can come on screen. And I wondered if either of them had a question for Marcel. They were so important in bringing uh, Lil Trudy to the attention of the public, both of them. OK, OK. Hi, Gordon. Hi, Marcel. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Um, it, it was a very strong relationship with Flight. Um, I mean, he was considerably older than her. When she went to the Grosvenor School, she was 18. Um, uh, but I think he, he, was, he had left his wife and he had, um, <clears throat> he had a new companion in Edith Lawrence. Yeah. Um, but I think there were, I think Flight used to visit her in Switzerland because he had a habitable cave that he had bought uh, on the banks of the Seine about um, 50 kilometers from Paris at Chantemel. Um, so I think that there was, I think there was a very strong friendship between them which carried on until his death in, in 1955. Yeah, absolutely, you're right. But he didn't just visit uh, Lil in, in Schwanden alone. Oh, he went with Edith. Lawrence was with him. Yeah. Yeah. And she did pieces. We have pieces. We show them in the show. She did in 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 uh, Clarus. So it, they work together, you know. And they, they I don't know. It, nobody states how long they were together, um, but they sort of visited them, and then they went on little trips up in the mountains and. Um, they did together uh, some art pieces. It's quite, it's quite I think, amazing. I think you're right about there are none that I know of in, in, in France um, of the Grosvenor School works. In fact, none of it is known in France at all, as far as I know. I think the market has been extensively the, the Anglo-Saxon world, as you say, with uh, New Zealand, because uh, Rex Nankervell, who ran the uh, Redfern Gallery in the 20s, uh, right up until his retirement in 1965, was a New Zealander. Uh, there were connections with Australia because the, um, <clears throat> the studio magazine advertised extensively the Grosvenor School, and uh, you had these young women like Evelyn Syme and Ethel Spouse uh, um, and, and um, Dorrit Black, who came to England and studied at the school. Um, and, and the market was, as I said, just an Anglo-Saxon market. It's just such a pity um, that it hasn't gone any, any further. So I think there is I, one museum in Germany just outside of uh, Stuttgart, which yeah, specializes. Be seen, yeah. yeah, they have they have a collection in Germany. Yeah. But any Thanks other to them, we, 
thanks to them, we, we, we were able to fill some of our holes, you know? <laughs> so, no, it's, it's, I tell you, it's, it's, it's a shame that, um, uh, that the Swiss didn't pick up, you know? Well, you, you better yeah. organize a show of Grosvenor School in Switzerland. Well, we have, um, uh, we show four pieces of other Grosvenor School artists. But even there, I have no idea if they knew each other. Mm. If if I I didn't I didn't see for I, I mean I see from the log books. Aha! Uh -huh, this goes to Claude Fly, but nothing goes to Sibyl Andrews. Or I, I mean, they were not connected because they were in different years at the Grosvenor yeah. School. Yeah. And and somehow maybe they were shown together in one of those liner cut um, shows, um, but they, they there was no direct connection, you know. Yeah. So 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 it, it's all on this one string between Claude Flight and Lil Judy that this happened. That. And and unfortunately, it all went to to, to the big stuff. All is um, it now assembled uh, in 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 America, not in Switzerland. And and he featured her in his book too, which is important. I think several pages for fixing the wires in in his handbook. So, I mean, just yeah. to show flight support transcended yeah. even his exhibitions. Yeah. And you you've seen the first time now. The original dedication. That's fantastic. Marcel found the inscription. Um, the book. That's great. We can clear up a, a mystery. No, what what was strange that you put it in into brackets and then you added that's, even a, so well, it was. I mean, it was yeah, only reported being in this other place, but you found the source, so you were able to clear that yeah. up, which was yeah. great. Yeah. Yeah. So this was all pure chance. I mean, was, we didn't even we didn't even know that all these things. Yes, um, were, you know. Yeah. Well, I'm very glad you invited me to write for the book, and we we're able to <laughs> create this uh, dialogue, which is so important. So, I think with that, we have um, gone a little bit o over our our, our time. Um, Mary, did you want to say anything? Um, if yeah, not, let's. I want to meet Mary. <laughs> where is she <laughs> oh she may have we, we're about we're about uh almost over our our allotted time and we'll get cut off by zoom i believe very shortly so uh, okay. um i want to thank you marcel for a really really oh wonderful talk i think it, it brought so much to the um to the conversation and to our understanding again this really should be a groundbreaking exhibition um, and I'm glad that it's up through March, which is a, a little bit longer run. So that's wonderful that we can actually get to see all this important research, including paintings and other uh, work that we may not know um, and archival sources for um, Lil Shooty. And it's just gonna add so much to the literature and our understanding of this as what you said, the, the uh, known unknown artists. So um, thank you, Marcel, you've given us much to think about. Thank you, David and Jenny for your support. And thank you, Jennifer and Marcel. We just wanna remind everyone to join us next Monday for the final installment of this symposium. We'll have more time with Gordon Samuel uh, joined by Mary Ryan and legendary collector Les Garfield. And I also invite you to come along with us tomorrow for a live studio visit with master printer Cole Rogers at High Point Editions. High Point Editions is the subject of a major exhibition currently on view at the Minneapolis Institute of Art, the contemporary print, 20 years of High Point Editions. So thank you all and we'll see you tomorrow. Okay, I see you next week. I'm, I'm gonna join there too. All right. <laughs> <laughs>